Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good and hope you're all safe. Welcome to Olive Board and this is Divya Ramakrishna. And we are back with the revision series for the finance section today. As we have done for the management, we are also going to start with finance sections today. And it will be a daily series till Thursday. So in the finance part, we'll be covering 100 most questions. And this is going to be beneficial for all those who are preparing for SEBI grade examination and also for RBA grade B examination. Right. So before beginning the lecture, I want to hear from every one of you if my voice is audible or not, so that we can quickly get to the lecture. If I am audible and if everything is set, please uh, hit a thumbs up or no me with a yes. So hi Nilesh, hi Manish. So before I hear any yes, yes, there are some questions by Manish here. How can I catch up the management videos? See, please go to the Olive Board uh, channel and you will find the playlist of management section videos, Manish. Oh, I hope I answered your question. Yes. Thank you everyone for responding. Yes, let's begin with the class today quickly. Hey everybody, sorry for the delay. Uh, there's a problem with the internet connections because of the cyclone hitting states like Tamil Nadu and um, Andhra Pradesh. So let's begin the class. As always, I would like to start my class with the quote for the day. And uh, today's quote is, the difference between winning and losing is most often not quitting, as Walt Disney has pointed out. And it's very, very obvious that we should not quit and that's what is going to make the difference from a loser to a winner, right? So please hold on uh, to things that you've been doing uh, all the while and keep doing it regularly and definitely you're going to win, right? So take this positive day long and I want you all to be keep uh, informed of the upcoming events with SEBI uh, and RBA at Olive Board. The first uh, thing that I want to to note is that we are starting this 100 most important questions for finance today and this is going to be a regular series at 6 p.m. daily and we have been doing a current affairs series for RBA grade B uh, on every Tuesday and it's going to happen even today at 7 p.m. and we also have an exclusive series for SEBI grade A current affairs which happens every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and also a government schemes uh, lecture series for RBA grade B phase 2 which happens every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. and you will find the links for the same in the description box below right so let's get started without um, waiting anymore and the first question is this which of the following are the functions of the money market so i would request every one of you to give answers very quickly so that we do not delay it anymore first it forms the basis for management of liquidity and money in the economy by the monetary authorities to to provide reasonable access to the users of the short money short term money for meeting their uh, requirements at the realistic prices and three improve the efficiency of the capital allocation through a competitive pricing mechanism. So what is the answer for this question? It is a very simple question and I think uh, we will be getting the correct answers quickly. So the answer is option A. It is not uh, C but it's option A which is both one and so two uh, functions are one is it going to definitely influence the monetary policy so it is going to uh, talk about the liquidity and the money in the economy and this is going to be also influencing the monetary policy and second important function of the money market is that it's going to provide short-term money so this is a very simple point one and two is the answer that is option a right so before moving further we need to know what is money market so financial market in india is divided into two one is uh, money market and other is the capital market right what is money market it is a, a segment of the financial market where you see that the borrowing and the lending is going to be taking place in short term that is less than a year so all the borrowing and lending that is happening within a year will fall under the category of money market. And you must note here that uh, a money market in India is generally regulated by RBA. So the max for maximum of the cases, it is RBA, which acts as the regulator in the uh, money market. And uh, the money market in India is 
organized into two sectors one is the organized sector and other is the unorganized sector which is also called as the unregulated sector and in the unregulated sector we see that it is mostly the indigenous banks and the money lenders which form the usual part of it so mostly earlier it was also non banking financial institutions which were falling under the sector but now we see that with increased regulation from rbi we can no more categorize nbfis as an organized sector right especially after ilfs scam we see that increased regulation from rbi so it is going to be con uh, converted to the organized sector so in the organized sector we have mainly predominantly banks that is the commercial banks um scheduled and non scheduled together and also we have cooperative banks which play an important role in the indian money market so this is the overview of the indian money market and we should uh, remember that it is a short term market and uh, here we should know the important functions that a money market does right one is it plays an important role in the equilibrium uh, of the economy then two it promotes the economic growth by providing short term liquid uh, funds and three it is going to promote trade and industry by providing necessary investments for them and it's going to mainly act as a tool for aiding the monetary policy right and also it is going to act as a source of finance for the government so these are some of the important functions that a money market does next question which of the following market is called as a stock market again a very simple question the idea of this is to help you in revision and uh, a call money market money market primary market secondary market and uh, e c and d the answer is option b secondary market so stock market is primarily a secondary market secondary market is called as a stock market right so this forms a part of the capital market capital market in india is regular is divided into two sectors one is the primary market and the secondary market we all know that financial market is divided into two types one is money market and other is capital market in the capital market we have the primary market and the secondary market and secondary market is often also referred to as the stock market the basic difference between primary market and the secondary market is that primary market is the short term market where sorry it is uh, in the primary market you will see that the beneficiary the main beneficiary is going to be the organizations where uh, it is going to first time issue their stocks right uh, and in the secondary market the primary beneficiary is going to be the investor here the aim of the primary market is to help the uh, companies or the organizations raise funds whereas here the aim in the secondary market is going to be improve the appreciation of the investment for the shareholders and the capital and here it is mainly done through ipos or initial public offerings uh, by the companies and here in the cap in the secondary market or the stock market it is going to undertake the trading of the securities already offered in the primary market right so the securities which are issued in the primary market will be traded here in the secondary market right so this is a basic difference between what is a primary and a secondary market next question which of the following instruments of the money market provide liquidity to the government and the banks a t bills b commercial bills c certificate of deposits d a and c and e all of the above the answer here again is very simple what is the answer it is option d a and c it is the t bills that is the treasury bills and the certificate of deposit which will uh, provide liquidity to the governments and the banks whereas the commercial bills or the papers commercial bills and the papers will provide liquidity to the corporate or the private sector right so as we have all seen here money market has different instruments so these two instruments the treasury bills and the certificate of de deposit will be providing liquidity to the government and the banks so let's know more about the different instruments in the money market so in the money market as we've already seen we have an organized market and an unorganized market in the organized ma market we have different instruments through which the operations are undertaken one is the call and the notice money market the second is a treasury bill market the third is the commercial papers and the commercial fourth is the commercial bills fifth is a certificate of deposits then we have money market mutual funds repo market which is mainly undertaken by rbi right and uh, dfhi so these are the various instruments through which organized market is going to run we will be looking into some of these instruments de in detail in the coming questions too right we have to understand that these are the various instruments that the organized market under has
it. So you can expect questions also on the lines of which of the following will uh, fall under the money market instrument. So we must be clear with this basic idea. Next question, which of the following entities are recognized as the participants of call money market by RBA? Again, a simple question which will help you revise. So A, regional rural banks. B, cooperative banks, C, payment banks, and D, B, and C, E, A, and B. So, which of the entities are recognized as participants of the call money market by RBA? The answer is option B, B, and C. So, you have cooperative banks and the payment banks which form a part of the call money market but not the regional rural banks. So, we have to remember this. RRBs do not form a part of the call money market. Right. So what is a call money market in the first place? Uh, it is a market where we see that borrowing and lending is going to happen one day or overnight. Right. So it's a one day market, overnight market, which is called as a call money market. And here the interest uh, position or the interest rate is not determined by RBA rather than the liquidity uh, position in the market is going to determine the interest rate. And the interest rate in the call money market is called as call rate right so the interest rate in a call money market is called as a call rate and there are different institutions that uh, are participants in the call money market as you all see here so all the scheduled commercial banks including sba but excluding rrbs as we have seen before so all scheduled commercial banks excluding rrbs and we have Discount and Finance House of India. We have Securities Trading Corporation of India, Cooperative Banks. All cooperative banks except land development banks. Other than land development banks, any other cooperative banks will also be participant of the call money market. We have foreign banks also, which is very important, which can participate in the call money market. And NABAD and all the uh, regulators like LIC, IDBI can also participate in the call money market. Right? As we've already seen, this is... Uh, one of the important uh, variable for RBA in determining the monetary policy and also to assess the li liquidity situation in the market, right? So it is in fact called as the most sensitive segment of the economy. So there can be question on these lines because it's happening uh, on an overnight or a daily basis. It's the most sensitive segment of the economy with uh, daily fluctuations, right? So you have another market also with the similar features and that is the notice market we have to remember but with a slight change which works from 2 to 14 days but the participants remain the same so for the call money market and for the notice market we have the same participants with the same exclusions that is rrbs are excluded and land development plans from the cooperative banks are excluded right next question which of the following statements regarding treasury bills is incorrect can i have the responses a they are issued uh, by the central government and the state governments. B, they are issued at the discount to the face value. C, it acts as a requirement for a CRR, cash reserve ratio and uh, statutory liquidity ratio for banks. D, A and C, E, all of the above. What is the answer here? It is option A. The question is asking for the incorrect statement and the incorrect statement here is that they are issued only by central government but not by the state governments, right? So A is in the incorrect statement. But if they were asking what are the correct statement, you should remember that they are uh, issued at a discount to the face value and they can uh, act as a requirement for CRR and SLR for the scheduled commercial banks, right? So A and C are going to be the correct options whereas the incorrect option is the A because state governments cannot uh, provide the treasury bills. So what is a treasury bill? It is one of the most important uh, money market uh, instrument which is going to provide uh, some um, liquidity to the government mainly. So if government is free, um, uh, it is falling short of its revenue targets, it's mostly going to uh, issue these treasury bills, right? And on behalf of the government of India, it is the RBA which takes the work of issuing the treasury bills. We have to remember that. So it is not the government of India directly which is going to do that, but RBA will be issuing the treasury bills on behalf of the, uh, on behalf of the government of India. And uh, here you have to remember that uh, they are also called as zero coupon bonds or zero coupon securities as there is no interest that will be paid on the treasury bills and there are three main variants of treasury bills one is 91 tables the other is 182 tables and we have the 364 
demons, right? And you have to remember another important point is that all the treasury bills will be issued at a discount to the face value, but they will be redeemed at the face value. That is, for example, when a 91 day treasury bill, as you see, if it is having a face value of 100 rupees, it will be issued at a, at say probably 98.2 rupees or 98 rupees. So there is a discount of 1.8 rupees, which is going to be given to the customer, but the customers will be able to redeem at the face value. So they'll be getting 100 rupees on maturity, but they'll be buying it at a low cost. This is called as issued at discount to the face value, right? So next question, uh, what does CBLO stand for? A, collective bank lending obligation, B, collective borrowing lending obligation, C, collateralized bank lending obligation, D, collective borrowing lending obligation, and E, collateralized borrowing and lending obligation. What is the answer for this question? It is option E, collateralized borrowing and lending obligation. So this is a very important uh, question. So CBLO stands for collateralized borrowing and lending obligation. So let's know more about it. What is a collateralized borrowing and lending option? We have to remember that it is more or less similar to the call money market, CMM. Just like the call money market, it has um, similar uh, features, but Main thing is that we provide a collateral here and uh, this is an instrument that was introduced in the year 2003 by, you have to remember that it is Clearing Corporation of India Limited that has introduced this CCIL, has introduced collateralized borrowing and lending op option in the year 2003. It is mainly for those uh, entities which cannot participate in the call money market. So all that uh, entities can participate with the collateralized borrowing and lending obligations. So only one big change as we all see here is that here the borrowings are going to be fully collateralized and uh, this is going to reduce the risks, right? So with the collateral, they are going to borrow and lend. That is the main difference with respect to call money market and CBLO. And what will act as a collateral here? Here it is mainly the central government securities. All the central government uh, securities will act as the collateral uh, in the CDLO. And you have to remember that uh, the collateralized, uh, the uh, all the, um, one second, one second guys. So all the central government uh, securities with a maturity of at least six months will act as a collateral in CBLO, right? So these are the important points that we need to remember with respect to CBLO. Next question is, primary issuances by companies are governed by SEBI in terms of uh, SEBI ICDR regulations 2009. What does ICDR stand for? Uh, in, interesting and also an important question. So what is the answer for ICDR? Integrated capital and disclosure uh, requirements, issue of capital, and the disclosure requirements, C, issue of cost and uh, disclosure re requirements, and D, integrated cost and disclosure requirements. I think it is a simple question. It is B, issue of capital and disclosure requirements. So these are the regulations which were introduced by SEBI in the year 2009 to regulate uh, the primary issuances in the capital market. So all the primary issuances will be following, uh, following this ICDR regulations. Right. So in the primary issues, we have different types of issues. We have the public issues. We have the rights issues. We have the preferential issues, bonus, qualified institutional placements, IDR issues. All these will be governed by the ICDR regulations. Right. So we have different uh, issues in the primary market and the primary market is also primary issues or primary market is also called as a new issue market, right? Because here the securities are issued for the very first time by the company for raising the funds here. So it is also called as a NIM or a new issue market. And the process of selling the new securities in a primary market, what is, so through all these instruments, they are going to sell the new securities. And what is this process called as? It is called as underwriting. Right. So you can expect questions on these simple concepts also. So the process through which they are going to sell this new securities is called as underwriting. Right. And it is also called as a new issue market. Next question, which of the following institutions are classified as qualified institutional buyers? One, scheduled commercial banks. Two, pension funds and provident funds with a minimum corpus of 25 crores. Three, FIIs registered with SEBI. So what is the answer for this question? A1 and 2, B2 
टू एंड थ्री बी वन एंड थ्री बी आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी ऑल ऑफ दी एब right so scheduled commercial banks pension funds and provident funds with minimum corpus of 25 crores and also fis registered with sebi all are classified as qualified institutional buyers so the answer is d all of the above so who are qualified institutional buyers these are public financial institutions and these are described in the section 4a of companies act 1956 so under which you see that these are a group of investors who will follow certain regulations which sebi has set up for them and the only then they'll be called as a qualified institutional buyers and they are called as qualified institutional buyers because these are investors who are generally uh, having that necessary expertise and the financial muscle to evaluate and invest in the capital market so they have the necessary expertise and also experience and that is the reason they are called as qualified institutional buyers so under which you see that scheduled commercial banks mutual funds you have foreign fias registered with sebi multilateral and de bilateral development financial institutions venture capitals registered with sebi foreign venture capital investors registered with sebi state industrial development corporations insurance companies registered with irda and pension and provident funds with a minimum corpus of 25 crores will also be categorized as qualified institutional buyers and also the national investment fund right please look at all the categories so that you can uh, answer any question with respect to this right so these are all classified as qualified institutional buyers next question which of the following options is used by companies to provide stability to price of the share in the secondary market immediately on listing so which is that option that is going to give the companies the stability of price in the secondary market which is done immediately on listing a depository receipts b qualified institutional placements c preferential issue d grew green shoe option and e now the above the correct answer here is it is option d green shoe option right it's not option b rather it is option d green shoe option is one of the options that companies generally resort to to provide that stability to price uh, of the share in the secondary market which is done immediately on listing right so let's know what is a green shoe option green shoe option is nothing but an over allotment option so it is also called as over allotment option and it is an option of allocating shares as i said in excess of the shares included in the public issue and what is a public issue whenever a company is uh, issuing shares for the very first time to the public at large it is called as a public issue and whenever it is uh, issuing shares in excess that is called as a green shoe option and sebi permits this to a tune of 15% over the existing allocation of shares so a company can issue the shares over and um, uh, over uh, the existing Uh, amount of shares to a ceiling rate of around fifteen percent, beyond which it cannot be issued. So, to a tune of fifteen percent, every company can issue the excess shares, right? And this is a option that is used as a stabilizing mechanism for the uh, price stabilizing mechanism for the new issued shares, right? For example, let's understand how it works. For example, if a company is deciding uh, to publicly sell around one lakh shares. right and the underwriters can exercise their group green shoe option and instead of selling 1 lakh shares what they do is they will sell a ma sell a maximum of 1.15 lakh shares where the shares are priced and they can be publicly traded and after once the uh, the underwriter is selling it what the underwriters do is that they will be buying back the 15% of shares again they will buy back the 15% of the excess share that are going that they issued in the first place right and this is mainly done because uh, it is going to stabilize the fluctuating share prices by increasing or decreasing the supply of shares right so when there is an excess it is going to accordingly uh, stabilize the prices right and that is how the green shoe options generally work the last question of the day what is a stock split it is a decision of company's board to increase the number of shares by issuing more shares to the current shareholders in the 2:1 to 1 ratio an invitation to the existing shareholders to purchase additional new shares in the company see it is a purchase by a company of its outstanding shares that reduces the number of its shares in the open market and d they are issued out of its profits to the shareholders 
and E none of the above. What is the answer for this? The correct option is option A. It is a decision of the company's board to increase the number of share by issuing more shares to the current shareholders in a 2 is to 1 ratio. Right? It's mainly aiming to increase the number of shares. What is a stock split? It is nothing but a corporate action in which you see the company divides its ex existing outstanding shares into smaller number of multiple shares. Right? For example, if a stock split is done by company ABC in the ratio of 10 is to 1, what is it going to mean? It means the shareholders will have 10 shares post every split. So for every one share, after the split, a shareholder is going to hold 10 shares, right? If the shareholders was earlier holding one share, after the split, they are going to hold 10 shares. But that is not going to inc uh, increase the amount of, of the or the price of the shares that they are holding because you will see that the price is going to equivalently adjust. So if it has become 10 shares, the price per share is going to uh, accordingly decrease to rupees 100 after the split right because 1000 by 10 it's going to be rupees 100. So what is stocks? Why we are doing stock split in the first place? It is to make the stock more affordable for the retail investors, very small retail investors that so that they will be able to invest in these kind of stock options, right? So, which is a mechanism to increase the investor's base, right? And also increase the liquidity in the market. So, what are the impacts of such a stock split? You are, here you have to remember that if there are questions asking after a stock split, the market capitalization of a company is going to or a corporate is going to increase or decrease. It is wrong. No, it is going to remain the same. The demand for the stock is going to increase because the number of stock is going to be increases. The shares are going to be increases. The share price first is going to definitely decrease. Probably after the increasing demand, it might increase in future, right? That is the main um, idea of a stock split. And the number of outstanding shares are definitely going to increase, but the earnings and the dividend per share is obviously going to decrease, right? So remember what will be the uh, post impact of the stock splits very, very clearly so that you can answer any of the questions even on these lines. So thank you everyone. So these are the 10 questions for the day. We'll meet up in the next class with the next 10 questions. And um, I want you all to be keep uh, be informed that at Olive Board, we provide you a SEB grade A full-time uh, course which will help you cover all the pillars of the examination and strengthen your preparation. We have a learning module where you will be given access to the detailed study notes and also to subject-wise lead video lessons. And also we have a practice modules where you have subject-wise tests and also mini mock tests and also full-length texts. And also we have a revised module which will help you revise uh, through vision classes and also through live practice sessions and you can enroll to the SEBI course uh, at Olive Board with my 20 coupon which will help you get a 20% discount and as I told before we have some events which can help you and enable you in your preparation if you are preparing for SEBI grade A and also for RP grade B examination. For SEBI grade A as we have started today we have the 100 most important questions for finance uh, lecture series and um, it is going to happen uh, daily at 6 p.m. And uh, for RBA grade B, we have already started a current affairs series which happens every Tuesday, that is today also. We have it at 7 p.m. And we also have a current affairs series for SEBI grade A phase one of the examination every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And a government schemes uh, lecture series for RBA grade B phase two on every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. And you will find the links for the same in the description box below. Thank you so much. Um, if you've liked the video and if you've found the video useful, please hit the like button. And if you want to stay updated with respect to the examination preparation, please subscribe to Olive Board channel. And thank you so much and have a happy learning.